Good morning. My name is Jeffrey and I'm from SMRT. Glad to be here today. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'll be sharing on the development of the SMRT strategic model. It is a PT model that simulates the public transport system in Singapore. Before I dive into the strategic model, I would like to start with a short history of our transport simulation in SMRT. We will take a look at some of the key events that shape the direction of planning and model development in SMRT. After that, we will dive into the SMRT strategic model. I will explain how the model was developed, right, and the structure of the model. Right? I will also highlight some of the key modules in the model, like uh, the land use model, as well as the distance fare model. Then we will take a look at the model performance when we compare the actual versus model results. Finally, we will share our future plans for CUBE, uh, which is to integrate CUBE with our genetic algorithm. Um, we will explain what is GA and how we are using uh, GA in consultancy projects. Our journey began in 2002. The first model we had in SMRT was actually ME2 right, and not CUBE. Right? We needed a strategic model to evaluate the impact of the North East Line. At that moment in time, the planning team do not have the capability to build a strategic model of Singapore. Right? So what we did was to engage an external consultant to develop the first uh, uh, strategic model for the company. Five years later in 07, right, we realized that the model needs to be upgraded because the model accuracy was really not up to expectation. Again, another consultancy was called to build a model and uh, at that moment in time we decided to change the software from ME2 to Cube. In 2010 the management um, decided that it is very important uh, for the company to have the capability to build our own model. Uh, so in 2010 a transport uh, modeling team was formed. Right, uh, The new modeling team uh, started work on to update uh, the 207 cube model. Very quickly, one year later, right in 2011, the team decided that we should abandon model. Right, instead of fixing a model developed by external consultant, we felt that um, we were binded by the existing structure and methodology, right, of the 207 model, and we are unable to freely express what our model should be. Right. After careful consideration, we made a bold decision to start a new model from scratch. Right. Right. So 2011 was actually a very important year for planning in SMRT. From then onwards, uh, we never looked back. In 2012, right, the first in-house model was out. Right. With the new model, new comes new features in the model. We built a new four-stage model. Right. A morning peak assignment model to model PPHPD and a distance fair model to estimate revenue. So with this new model, we also incorporate new tools like Python as well as GIS into the planning process. Right. Two years later, in 2014, we had to start with the second model upgrade, mainly because of the release of the master plan 2014 and, and also there was a major cube version upgrade from 5 to 6.0. In 2015, yeah, we completed the second overhaul. Right? Um, in the new model, the number of zones uh, was increased from 1180 to 1503 to take into account the new developments um, in the master plan 2014. Right? The forecasting horizon is also stretched from 2021 to 2030. Right? And we migrated uh, the software from 5 to 6.1. In 2016, right, we branch out to traffic and station modeling with the purchase of Visim as well as Mass Motion. Right, in 2018, right, we purchase OpenTrack for train simulation. This is actually the micro simulations for train network. Right, currently we are in the midst of uh, the third model upgrade update. Right, to model uh, to update the land use model based on the latest master plan 2019. We are offering consultancy studies and these are the services provided by SMRT. Okay, now let's move on to the CUBE um, strategic model. 
Lens multi model is a pure PT model, right? It simulates the entire PT uh, transport system in Singapore, which includes all the buses and trains, right? The current model is able to forecast due scenario 2030, and we have plans to extend the modeling horizon to 2040 in the current model update. Like through the four stage process, we are able to take into account the changes in PT network, land use, population will share as well as changes in uh, operations, right? train operations as well as bus operations in terms of headway and short runs. In SMRT, um, the model is used essentially for the building of um, rail lines, right? to estimate the ridership, revenue as well as the resources needed to run the line. Right. And internally within the planning process, it is also used to assess the impact on existing lines. This is a screenshot of the SMRT model. It consists of 1503 zones. Apart from the existing lines, new lines like the Thompson East Coast Line, as well as the future Jewel Region Line was also coded into the Cube Network. Let's move on to the model development and structure. As mentioned before, in 2011, we built our in-house model from scratch. When we built a model, we did not adopt the traditional four-step approach. Uh, which is trip generation, distribution, mode choice, and assignment. Instead, we did it in the reverse order as you can see on the diagram on the left. Starting with assignment, distribution, and trip generation. Uh, it's not a very conventional way of building model. Um, what we had during the model development was 17% of the trains only data. And we have uh, some data on buses. We, we felt that with the data, we should be able to estimate the PT metrics of Singapore. Right? We use uh, cube analysis together with some uh, other metric estimation techniques to estimate the base metrics. And we assign the metrics to the PT network. It was actually a very long and iterative process. But in the end, we managed to get a very good base metrics for the model. Now with the base metrics, right, the next question is how, how do we project for future scenarios? To do that, we have to develop the trip distribution as well as the trip generation models. Right? Development of um, and calibration of the gravity model took some time. Right? We have to ensure that the model is stable and able to distribute the trip ends in a very consistent manner. Right? Um, the, the development of the trip generation model was actually the most tedious process in the entire model development process, right? We had to digitize the entire master plan of Singapore. I will share more details shortly. Right, with the base model calibrated and validated, right, the model for future scenario revert back to the typical four stage process as you can see on the right, where we take in uh, the land use, PT network to model the impact of future years, and that is how we model uh, for future scenarios. I would like to touch on the land use model. Right? To support the trip generation model, we had uh, a land use database stored in a separate GIS system. Um, this is a screenshot of the SMRT uh, land use model in GIS. Right? We did a lot of work on this uh, land use model. Right? We split the entire Singapore island into 15,000 land use polygon. Right? Trip generation is supported by seven regression groups to estimate the uh, trip ends uh, for the 150 zones uh, in cube. Right? For each polygon, we have uh, attributes on the land use type, expect expected completion date, population, plot ratio, gross floor area. Right. Data for all the, the land use model are uh, actually obtained from different sources, mainly from government agencies, and we check and update the model every quarterly. In terms of model performance, okay, these are the average variance that we have observed uh, from the cube uh, model. Right. We compare the cube forecast around three years before the line is open. Right, with the actual numbers 6 to 12 months after the line is open, when the ridership stabilized. The typical ridership variance is around um, 10%, right? chip length around 5 to 10%, PPHBD. 
which is the AM peak loading uh, along the network is around 5%, right? Location of the peak load is also very important, right? And the AM assignment of the cube model is able to predict this very accurately. Um, we move on to the modeling of fares. The public transport fares in Singapore is calculated based on distance travel. Right? The calculation of fares is actually very resource intensive. We need to account for the different fare types along among the services. After getting the revenue, we need to apportion the revenue back uh, to the individual services. To do this, right, we created a revenue model in Cube. We rerun the assignment for all the IJ path and in the process uh, we generated 40 gigabyte of print files or journey records and we pass it to an external process um, that we developed in Python uh, to calculate uh, the fares as well as the apportionment then uh, reports are generated uh, by line and by service level I've covered very briefly the key modules in the SMRT model in the next slide, I will share our future plans for Cube. For the past one year, we have been working on network planning using genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm is basically a population-based search algorithm. Right? We start with an initial set of solutions and we choose the best solution. And we make minor adjustments to these solutions to form new solutions. Right? And we repeat the process of choosing the best solution, make amendments, and produce new solutions. Eventually, the strongest and the best solution will remain after many iterations. What you see here is our process to find the optimum bus network using genetic algorithm. And we have coded the whole process in uh, Python, right, using the network X package. Let me briefly go through the, the various tasks. Task one, okay, we import the OD metrics developed for the study area, right? Task two. We code the road network, location of the bus terminal, set the link time and distance, and we generate a set of uh, feasible routes. Right, this is uh, the initial solution. Task three, okay, we have to set a criteria to measure the quality of the solution. Right, it could be the number of buses using uh, using the network, the right, average travel time, number of transfers, etc. Right. Um, right to evaluate the criteria and uh, the quality of the the solution right we actually built a very lightweight assignment module within Python right to have to evaluate all these solutions task 4 right we run the genetic algorithm to actually find the best network this is how the routes are represented in genetic algorithm Right. We have a set of uh, possible routes uh, generated based on the network of the study area. It shows um, the route number, the sequence of nodes, uh, as well as the time taken. Now, the GA actually take all this information right, um, and search for a set of routes to form the network, right, subjected and to predefine rules and conditions to identify the best solution which minimizes resources. So for this example, right, um, route one, right, route three, route five, and seven and nine are uh, selected uh, for evaluation. At the end of the search process, this is what we should be expecting, right? Um, it will show the proposed optimum network, right? For this example, there are actually two routes proposed but I'm only showing one lot for illustration right you also calculate the estimated demand right the bus capacity right as well as the headway of the service number of buses required right um, load profile of the service as well as the uh, uh, capacity wastage now what we have done is to do everything in Python, right? After the whole process, I, I need to recode the optimum network back into Cube. I want, if I want to do further analysis, and this is actually a very manual process. The proposed improvement, right, is to really develop a converter to convert the network between network X to the Cube network, right? If we can do that, then it would actually speed up the whole coding process 
right at the start of the project I could I could code the network in cube right export it to network X and actually run the GA and export the result back to cube seamlessly right so this is something that we have um, in plan right to improve the cube then with this I think this is the end of my presentation thank you very much